Now let's look at local funds. Establishing a local fund uh, in the UAE. I know the term uh, local fund is a broad term because there are so many different types of funds. And you're going to see that in this chapter. Uh, you've got the what Eska calls it, like the local fund, which is a mutual fund. You also have the uh, the general and limited liability partnerships, which is another term for probably hedge funds. Uh, we're going to see ETFs. We're going to look at private equity funds. We're going to look at venture funds. So the term local fund, broadly, broadly speaking, broadly speaking, is very similar to what we know as mutual fund. I'm not saying a local fund is a mutual fund. I'm saying broadly speaking, is the same concept as mutual fund. So uh, it's a licensed entity by the authority to carry on the activity of management of investment funds. Uh, an entity licensed by ESCA to conduct the, the activity of family investment management. So some, sometimes these funds are established for the public. Uh, sometimes these funds are established for the private individuals and private investors. Sometimes these funds are, invest, are established for families rich families who want their 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 uh, their wealth to be managed by a certain fund manager these are sometimes called family offices right so provided that the units of that fund shall be 100% owned by one or more members of the family so you can't be a family fund if it's not owned by the family right whether such a member is a natural person a human being or a corporate person, a legal person. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as it's uh, it's owned by the family. It is the authority, the ESCA, that specifies the definition of family in relation to this type of fund. Yeah, I I think to be honest, I'm trying to remember uh, if if ESCA has and if in this book CSI has highlighted what ESCA calls family. You know, because, you know, everybody's, if you are part of the Italian mafia, you are not be related, but yeah, you are part of the family, you know. So <laughs> we all consider family to be different things. It says here, Eska specifies the definition of family in relation to this type of fund. I don't remember if it's highlighted in the book, but hey, if it is, good. I don't think CISI is going to ask you who of the following is considered to be family unless you find it somewhere later in the in the uh, in the book anyway moving on we're just trying to highlight here is that eska specifies who's family you can't go to eska and say this is my stepbrother you know this is i grew up with steve him and i we tight yeah eska is gonna say just because you grew up with him doesn't mean that he's your brother you know Continue with establishing a local fund. What's required? Two or more natural or corporate persons in relation to a self-managed fund, provided that the following conditions are met. So you need so what it says here that one person, whether natural or corporate, cannot just be the manager of a, of a self-managed fund. You need to be two or more natural or corporate persons, provided the following conditions are met. The natural person must meet the conditions and standards of qualifications, so he must be, you know, fit uh, for managing a fund. What we call fit and proper should be somewhere here. Yep. Keep that in mind. And passing of the professional licensing tests. Anybody who is in UAE knows you need to take the CSI exams to meet the uh, professional licensing requirements and also the CPD requirements. So after you have obtained or you finish the CSI qualifications, you need to show 30, I think, or 40 hours, I think it's 30 hours of, of, of learning every year. If it's a corporate person, they must fulfill the following conditions, capital of not less than 20 million dirhams. They have been carrying their main activity and have net profits for the last two financial years. And they must meet the initial approval conditions and the assessment requirements as stated uh, by the by ESCA's financial activities rulebook. The founders must subscribe at least 5 million dirhams into the fund. 
So you can attract outside investors, but you must put from your own pocket 5 million dirhams. You must not sell your fund shares for a period of at least six months from the date of founding the fund. And the founders must pay a self-management fee for a self-management fund as specified by the authority. And the fund will be liable to settle all fees once it's licensed and established. Now, let's continue with initial approvals. Establishing a fund requires approval from ESCA. That's, we know that. An application must be submitted, obviously. Uh, ESCA might either grant or reject within 10 working days. For a public fund, and within five working days for a private fund. From the receipt of application. Now, ESCA might issue its approval on conditions or restrictions. So just because they've approved you doesn't mean automatically you can start, you know, investing in the fund. Uh, there might be some conditions with that approval. If you are rejected, the grounds for rejections uh, can be either it's not in the interest of the public or the investment is not suitable for the investment environment or that the application does not represent the interest of the investors. It's probably one of the three, one of the three reasons. I'm going to repeat. You might get a question on these. What are the three reasons uh, for rejections? for establishing a fund. One, either it's not in the interest of the public or it's not suitable for the investment environment or it's not in the interest of the investors. Now, ESCA will notify the applicant on the rejections, on the rejection and why their application was rejected. What documents do we expect you to have in place? Well, the offering documents. If you've done other CSI qualifications, you know these are the prospectus and the KIID, the Key Investor Information Document. So we ex ESCA expects you as a fund manager and the founders, you need to offer these documents and in English or in Arabic. So, well, we've mentioned the Key Investor Inf Information Document or the KIID and the prospectus. These both must be offered in English or in Arabic. Uh, they must not contain any promises, guarantees, or misleading information. The prospectus must include the following disclosures. Now, if there are any shares in kind provided, well, let's talk about shares in kind. Shares in kind is something that we're going to see again later in this chapter. And from the feedback we've got from our students, it's something that CSI seems to be asking questions on in the exam. Shares in kind means, let's say, if you are a fund, You've, you've, you've established a fund, right? And investors want to invest in the fund. How do they invest in the fund? Obviously, they, they buy units in the fund. They buy shares in the fund, right? So the fund manager takes the capital from the investor. He takes money from them. And in return, he gives them units. He gives them shares in the fund. That's how it works. Uh, so this cash... That the investors put into the fund. This is the capital, you know, but the fund manager takes that cash and then invests it. That's how it usually works. But the, sometimes, instead of giving cash, investors actually give shares. And this is what we call shares in kind. The fund manager might accept shares because, you know, shares are assets, they might accept shares from the market. Their assets, the fund manager can take these shares and they can sell them and get cash in return. This is what we mean by shares in kind. It's when the fund manager sells units to investors and then instead of getting cash, instead of getting capital in cash, he gets the capital in the form of shares. So you know now that's, and obviously ESCA is, is uh, I mean, accepts it. But there are requirements, and you are expected to know these requirements, and you need to go to the book and read and read and read. Shares in kind are questioned in the exam. So the prospectus must include full disclosures of any shares in kind provided, whether it's provided by the investors, whether it's provided by the founders. Remember, founders must contribute into the fund. Sometimes they can contribute 
cash, sometimes it can contribute shares. And the units to be issued against them. Specifically, full information on every sharing kind, its owners and value, and the number of units to be issued against them. So if you are going to give me shares, okay, how many units am I going to give you against these shares? Summary of the evaluation report of the shares in kind. Because, and these shares, they need to be evaluated by a third party. We're going to look at evaluators in a bit. And there needs to be a summary of that evaluation report, basically on how much these shares are worth. Explanation of the extent to which the shares in kind can be disposed of after establishing the fund. So after you establish a fund, can you sell these shares you've taken from the investors, from the founders? Explanation to the extent to which the values of the shares in kind will vary after establishing the fund, because I mean, shares, they fluctuate every day. So we need to recognize that the value of the shares today, when we are taking them from the investors, from the founders, might be different from their value later in the future after we've established the fund. Final approval. So remember, you might get the initial approval quickly within seven days. We've highlighted here. So uh, within 10 days, sorry, if it's a public fund within 10 days, and if it's a private fund within five days. That's the initial approval. But then we have something called the final approval. The fund manager and the founders of the self-management fund must submit for the following items to the authority within no more than 30 days from closing subscriptions. Sub closing subscription means uh, you invite the public to invest, or oh, sorry, to subscribe, to basically show their interest, to, to invest in your fund. Uh, this is what we call we open subscriptions. Uh, usually there is a period of time where you accept subscriptions, and after that you close the subscription period. And then ESCA expects you to submit the following within 30 days of closing the, the subscription. Failing to do so, will deem the establishment failing to do so will deem the establishment procedures non-existent and require the return of the amount subscribed so if you don't submit the following to ESCA within 30 days of closing subscriptions ESCA uh, considers this uh, subscription as void and you need to return the money to the investors so what do you need to send you need to send a certificate from the auditor of the local fund stating that subscription to the capital has been completed you need to submit evidence proving that the natural and corporate persons who subscribe in a family fund are all family members and are 100% beneficial owners. You need to submit these two within 30 days of closing subscriptions or else ESCA will consider the subscription as void. ESCA will issue a certificate for establishing and licensing of the local fund, therefore, thereby allowing you to start doing fund management and investing. And they will give you that certificate within five days from the date of the submission of these auditor certificate and ownership and evidence, these two. So within five days of submitting these two, ESCA will issue you with a certificate or a license to start your fund investing activities. Now, as with everything else that we are going to constantly see, usually ESCA gives you uh, the license for one year commencing from the date of the issuance of the first license. So thereafter, the fund manager and the executive body of the self-management fund must submit an application for renewal every year, when not less than one month before the expiry date. Continuing with the final approval, all the legalities here performed by the fund manager uh, all the legalities performed by the fund manager or the founders of the self management fund in the incorporated and licensing process must be transferred to the local fund. So everything you've paid in establishing that fund must be transferred into the uh, local fund. The fund shall bear all expenses except for the offering and promoting the public units, which was done at the beginning, and the expenses of preparation of the offering documents. This must be bear, bore sorry, by the founders. It mentions these expenses must be borne by the fund manager or the founders. The local fund must begin its exercise of its investment policy within a period of 12 months. So after ESCA has approved you and given you the license to start doing fund management, you need to start doing it within 12 months. If you don't, then ESCA is going to uh, take the license from you. Every local fund 
must specify a financial year. It can be any time from any day to any day, but that must be at least 12 months. And it should, it must be, sorry, uh, at least six months and not more than 18 months. So you must specify a financial year. The first financial year of the local fund must not exceed 18 months. It must not be shorter than six months. After that, a financial year is a financial year, which is 12 months. The subsequent financial years will be consecutive periods running for 12 months. So your first financial year can be between 6 to 18 months. After that, after it's done, every consecutive financial year must be 12 months. Reporting requirements, you're going to see reporting requirements for, for companies, listed companies, you're going to see that for funds. So even if they're not listed, you still have to report to ESCA. You, first of all, you must prepare the financial reports according to the IFRS, which is the International Financial Reporting Standards. And if it's a if it's a Islamic fund, it needs to be done according to Sharia Committee. Now we have so you need to submit two types of funds, two types of reports: semi-annual reports every six months and annual reports. The semi-annual reports must be sent within forty-five days from the end of the semi-annual end of the six months, and the annual reports must be sent within three months from the end of the financial year. Continuing, you must prepare a, so we're talking here about the semi-annual financial reports, which is the balance sheet, the income statement. But as a fund, you must also send a semi-annual report, which is different than the financial report. This semi-annual report talks about the, the values of the assets and the units. It's, it's usually a valuation report, right? Uh, it talks about the material changes in the public fund and include any changes to your asset values and changes to your investment policy. And of course, the semi-annual report must be sent within 45 days. Uh, the annual report, same thing, on your performance and changes in your valuation and your assets must be sent within three months from the end of the year. And this annual report, same thing, talks about the material changes to the fund, third-party transactions, any restriction violations, any corrective procedures, and um, transactions you've done on the fund units. Remember, every fund must send two types of reports, financial reports done semi-annually and annually, and a valuation report done semi-annually and annually. And the semi-annuals must be sent within 45 days and the annuals within three months. Continuing with the reporting requirements, the fund manager must publish all the required reports in English and Arabic in both languages. Of course, copies must be sent to your investors. Copies must be sent also to ESCA. Uh, but usually, you don't actually send these copies to the actual investors. You need just to make them available to these investors. Usually, it's done uh, on your website. Must be somewhere here. Additional copies, provide them on the website. Because, I mean, some funds might have thousands of investors. We're not going to send them an email, all of them. We're just going to tell them, thank you for investing with us. Uh, if you want to continuously get updated on our performance, on our financial uh, standings, you can visit our website here and you can get the uh, up-to-date report all the time. And of course, these reports must be free of charge. You should not charge your investors uh, for the reports. Uh, reports related to any family fund will be limited to units holders. So if it's a family fund, you have to send the report to the family, right? Don't put it on the website. The ones that you put on the website are usually those that are for public. Family funds must be sent to the family members. In all cases, of course, you have to send copies to ESCO. Uh, 